Melissa Casillas, and before I start my speech, um, I have a couple of questions for you. Raise it, your hands if it applies to you or anybody you know. Um, have any of you guys ever been bullied on any social media platform? <laughs> um, raise your hand if any of you have ever been catfish on any social media platform? Okay. And raise your hand if if any of you guys have ever seen inappropriate content on um, social media platforms. <laughs> okay. So today my major claim is that social media has a critical negative effect on preteens and teens. According to stopbullying.org, cyberbullying is defined as bullying takes place on digital devices such as cell phones, computers, or tablets. My first secondary claim is social media increases cyberbullying. Students are harassed online. In a recent 2018 Pew research has informed a survey that over 59% of teens have been bullied or harassed online through social media. Students being harassed online have experienced many types of bullying such as threats, false rumors, or name calling. Self-esteem is lowered through social media. In, some, in the same research, they found out that 40 2% of teens are called offensive names, thus leading the kids to be bullied. Cyberbullying affects teens attending school. Another topic they included in the research is a percentage of threats, false rumors, and ex explicit images that were being requested through social media. The spreading of false rumors was at a 32% the physical threats at a 16% and the explicit images at a 7%. According to Metro News, catfishing is an act of pretending to be someone you are not online. It came up in a 2010 documentary and then later a TV show named Catfish. My secondary claim is social media has catfishing. In a published 2018 news article talking about catfishing, how it is usually <coughs> used and what it is used for. The phrase came from a 2010 documentary where the creator tells his story of how he was catfished and the point of his documentary was to show the dangers of social media. Though catfishing, through the article catfishing, states common telltale signs of catfishing. Through social media is not, oh sorry, social media is not all true in every account. In a 2018 article, it talks about 15 statistics on catfishing. The article goes on to list the statistics, but the one that was most interesting was that over 50% of social media accounts are fabricated. Fabricated meaning which is anything fake, such as even a slight hair color, your mm -hmm. age, your name, or even how you look. Social media brings catfish, catfish cyber friends. In two articles about catfishing, they both talk about a catfish could be someone close to you who is seeking revenge or even someone who is a compulsive liar. In my last point, I refer to inappropriate content, which, which could include pornography, violence, or offensive, offensive content. Inappropriate content can easily be accessible through social media. Social media has illegal and unsuitable content Links can be put on the social media platforms which anybody could click on, which could lead to pornography, um, violence, and other offensive content. Content stays online forever. Your online reputation is a reflection of who you are, and sometimes you repost or share content that can negatively reflect you, and a future peer or employer can see this. So with all these points, I come back to my major claim that social media has a critical negative effect on preteens and teens.
Well, I think the proposition at the beginning of the speech is pretty clear. Uh, the contents are only revealed to us because of the survey that you did, and uh, in the body of the speech you tell us what those main points are going to be, uh, but there's not really a preview that sets it up. And on, as far as controversy, I'm not sure that anybody doubts that uh, cyberbullying takes place or that catfishing takes place, so that's not where the controversy is. The controversy might be whether or not uh, we're uh, adequately prepared for that, whether we are aware of what's going on, whether we're doing something about it, uh, or how important it is. Uh, that's that may be where the main argument ought to be is how important it is, what impact it has, because that's the claim that you're making is that it has a negative effect. Uh, the fact that kids get cyber bullied doesn't necessarily show that there's a negative effect. Uh, name calling online, I'm sorry, you know, name calling is not a nice thing. It is rude, but how 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 does it hurt kids in the long run? You suggest that it might help hurt their uh, self image, and I'm going okay. Well, that. That may be true, but I don't know how we measure that, whether or not uh, it alters anything that occurs to those kids. Do they, be, do they fail their classes? Do they lack friends? Uh, do they become social dropouts? Uh, you know, do they not achieve the things that they might have achieved otherwise because they were either you know, called a name or uh, requested inappropriate things from them or uh, somebody threatened them online? Um, I, I don't know what the... And, and how significantly different is that from the kind of stuff that goes on offline? Uh, I think you need to make a better argument that suggests that there's something unique about this, that it is uh, more widespread than it would be offline, for instance, or that it has a more pernicious effect because it is online and because people don't necessarily know uh, how, how legitimate or how uh, much attention to grant it. The catfishing issue uh, is one of those things that also I think is a little bit problematic because you say it's a threat and I'm not exactly sure what the threat is. So somebody that uh, you don't know pretends to be somebody that you also don't know and uh, they become your fake friend or they've got a fake website uh, or social media account and what's the consequence of that? The closest I get is it could be somebody who is uh, seeking revenge on you but we don't have any examples of anybody seeking revenge. and. Uh, you know, it says that we end up with a bunch of cyber false friends. I'm going, well, cyber false friends might be better than having no friends whatsoever. What's the big deal about this? The, you mentioned the one example of the movie that the phrase originally comes from. Having seen that movie, I didn't know that there was any negative consequence to it. It was a little creepy. It was a little weird uh, what happened. But it's not like they requested a bunch of money from somebody or they turned out to be, you know, uh, somebody that was going to stab them to death uh, when they actually met. Uh, it was fairly innocuous. It was, uh, like I said, awkward, um, but not necessarily dangerous. You know, I think you need to develop an argument that says that there's some consequence to these things. That you know, you're, you're just suggesting that it happens, and but your claim is that it has a negative effect on people. And so, my, you know, I'm I'm looking for well, what's the negative effect? How are people harmed in some way? shape or form, and that I think is a little bit vague on this, uh, on this presentation. All right, thank you. Amber.